things. Do you have your ticket or you don't have one? No problem at all. Just hit the subscription button below. <laughs> Come on in. Hello, everyone. DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey, guys. I uh, just want to take a moment to uh, have a conversation with you all in regards to uh, the current uh, election cycle. It's not going to be a, my, my message is not about politics, but it's going to be about an individual, Joe Biden's behavior. And I hope you would give me a few minutes to, to listen to what I have to say. Uh, and I promise, as always, I'll connect the dots. And, and, and I'm only going to ask for you to do one thing, and that is to not only listen to what I'm going to share, but I also want you to think critically about it. What do I mean by critical thinking? Make up your own mind and make your own decision, but allow yourself to be influenced. Okay? So what I'm simply saying is that don't shut down your brain, your heart, and just say, I don't want to hear it because I mentioned a name that you may be fond of. Just listen to what I have to say. And then, you know, whatever your decision is, as you know, that's your decision. But before I get into Mr. Biden, I want to share a story that just came up recently. Uh, and, and, and this is in regards to um, a situation that happened in, uh, I want to say, I guess it's Dozier, uh, Florida. Okay. And... This, 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 this story is about murder, forced labor, and the forgotten black boys of Florida Dozer School for Boys, okay? In this article, let me get into the article with you real quick. And I'm going to go through this article with you, and I promise again, I'm going to connect the dots, but I'm also going to share a video with you as relating to the mentality of individuals who create these kind of situations for children, Okay. It says, in 1957, 11-year-old Johnny Lee Gaddy started uh, skipping class, embarrassed by his personal stutter, his persistent stutter, I'm sorry. Gaddy chose to avoid the relentless teasing of classmates in his day at, at his Dade County, Florida elementary school. One evening, the police showed up at his home and told his mother that they were taking him, the truant boy, to see the judge. I told my mother there wasn't any judge uh, there at 7 o'clock in the evening, recalls a 71-year-old Gaddy. He's still alive. He said, a pastor, who lives in, a pastor who lives in Florida. But they told her that the judge was waiting for me at the courthouse. Once I got there, he says, they put me in a cell and told me I had to stay there until the judge comes. Tired, the boy eventually went to sleep. When I awoke, remembers Gaddy, there was no judge and the officer was putting me in the car saying, son, you're on your way to Mariana. Five hours later, the day's 11-year-old arrived at Arthur G. Dozer School for Boys in Mariana, Florida. He was checked in and given a number of shots before being taken to the black side of the segregated campus and issued clothing and work boots. A man told me, boy, your life is fitting to change, says Gaddy, noting I didn't understand what he meant by that. But eventually, but I eventually found out what he meant, and he wasn't lying. Okay? Continuing, and I'm going to get this thing closed in a second, but I think already it's an important enough story to hear. Gaddy is currently one of 500 former students reporting that they were severely beaten, sexually assaulted, and used as slave labor at Dozer. Though the school was finally closed in 2011 after the U.S. Department of Justice investigation found ongoing excesses of force and a lack of safety and services, what is now being considered, I'm sorry, unearthing is to the extent of the atrocities over 111 years of the school. A January 16 uh, report by archaeologists and forensic anthropologists found from the, from the University of South Florida revealed 55 graves of 51 sets of remains and seven DNA uh, unifications and 14 other matches were made. Over the preliminary identification, several were from bodies hurriedly thrown into the grave and had been reported to their parents that these children had run away. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Now, if you heard what I said, 
the school was closed down in 2011. I want you to remember that. Because many times when we start talking about um, abuses of the past, and barely as it relates to forced labor on people of color, so-called African Americans, you know, Hebrew Israelites, although most of them don't know who the hell they are, because, you know, they, they believe the same. Okay, I digress. I won't get into that today. <laughs> But when you bring these things up, the first thing we're told, why are you guys bringing up the past? Why are you guys bringing up the past? Yet, this happened to Mr. Gaddy in 1957 as an 11-year-old child. Once, now, here's the story here. Once Mr. Gaddy was brought into that prison farm, is where it, where it actually turned out to be, under the guise of a boy's home, he said that he was working, they had him out in the field. And out in the field, he was forced to cut down a tree with a handsaw, with a two-sided two handsaw. Him and a seven-year-old boy. According to Mr. Gaddy, the seven-year-old boy was so small that as he pushed the saw one way, the seven-year-old boy was too small to push the saw back the other way. And so, therefore, it took them twice as long to cut the tree down because the 11-year-old Gaddy had to do all of the cutting. Well, the, 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 the overseers of the boys' home, got so angry because he had taken so long to cut down the tree, he decided to teach the 11-year-old Gaddy a lesson. Now, Gaddy didn't report the 7-year-old because he was afraid that if he did say that the reason he was being delayed or it took him so long to cut down that tree, something bad would have happened to the 7-year-old. So he was trying to protect the 7-year-old. Yes, an 11-year-old trying to protect a 7-year-old. Now, you might say that sounds like an exact story. That's bullshit. At 11 years old, I was in a position, and I won't get into that, of protecting my younger siblings. And if any of my siblings hear this video, they know exactly what I'm talking about, how I was trying to protect them from serious abuse. And they were just 9, 10, nine 8, 7, 6-year-old who I was trying to protect from serious violence happening to them, okay, over a period of time. So, yes, 11-year-olds will try to look out. Getting into the story. As the story progressed, he, the 11-year-old, was taken into a shed that they called the White House on the campus. Inside that shed, he said, it smelled like vomit, and you could see just, you know, blood spattered on the walls inside of the shed house. This is where they took the kids to so-called punish them. I suppose that you heard him talk about sexual abusing them, so I'm sure some other things were going on in that shade, probably in the dormitories as well. Be, keep on, let me continue on. They, he, for, he was forced to lay on a cot, hold on to both sides of the rail, and he was stripped naked and told that if you let go of these rails, I am going to kill you. This is what he was told by the big man who was uh, applying the punishment. This 11-year-old child says that he was hit so hard the first time that he had never been hit so hard by a leather strap on his buttocks in his entire life. And he said, the guy told him, you better not move because if you move, you're going to damage your testicles. He was given 12 lashes, but he told if he would let go of that rail, he would be killed or the guy would start all over again. He, of course, he did not let go of that rail. He said, when he finished with him, he got up, blood was running down the kid's legs. Blood running down his legs, Gaddy's legs. Gaddy asked the man, can I go to the doctor? He said, no. He said, the guy said, no, you're going to go to the cafeteria. So all the other kids in the cafeteria will understand we're not playing with you guys. Now, this happened right here in the United States in America, of America. Now, of course, this is 1957, 58. But you think that stopped? The school was only closed down, what, eight years ago because of, because of the many complaints about the, the, the atrocities, atrocities that were happening to those kids in the 2000s. Yes, in the 2000s. But this is one of many, many, many stories that would happen when you put kids in these institutions with no supervision and no understanding of what they really need to have and nobody to watch over them, no gatekeepers. And yet again, we're told that, you know, we're exaggerating when we talk about physical abuse and violence that are happening to children of color. Because this article says nothing about this going on with the white kids that were in that institution. It mainly emphasized the black kids were growing produce, uh, raising livestock, slaughtering livestock. That place was making $150,000 to $200,000 a year off of slave labor. In the 20th century, 
in the beginning of the 21st century. Now let's bring me to Mr. Joe Biden. This guy, under no circumstances, should be being, being supported by any person of color. So-called blacks, Negroes, whatever you want to call yourself. Not one of you guys should be casting a vote for this guy. Now I want you to keep in mind the story I just told you. This is something Joe Biden said in 1993. Okay? And I want you to listen to this guy. And for you guys who feel like Trump is the, the racist and all of this, and, you know, I would tell you that I don't know if the man is a racist, but I know he can say some very racial incendiary things. Okay? He doesn't seem to have a sensitivity bone in his goddamn body in terms of the impact of what he's saying, especially as the President of the United States. That I will say about Mr. Trump. But I have not heard anything like this from Mr. Trump. Check this out. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents. It doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social uh, become socialize into the fabric of society it doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society the end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe shoot my sister beat up my wife take on my sons so i don't want to ask what made them do this they must be taken off the street that's number one there's a consensus on that unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized. They literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets that society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow Listen forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Those people. Beyond the pale. And it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's Why? the sad truth. I'm the guy that said rehabilitation, when it occurs, we don't understand it, notice it. And when we, even when we notice it and we know it occurs, we don't know why. So you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release. That's why in our system there's... The so rehabilitation system, is not a condition for release. It's a shame, but we don't know how to rehabilitate. So make them slaves. But there is a consensus, and I will cease. A, we must make the streets safer. I don't care why I don't care. is a malfactor in society. I don't care why someone I don't is care. antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change their behavior. That's why we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it. But they are in jail. Away from my mother, your husband. Listen to this guy. This guy sounds like he's David Duke or some damn body. But we would be being... We would George be Wallace didn't do this kind of job. As a society, if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist and we must deal with that now you tell me guys what did you just hear a bigot racist bigot calling us those people under no circumstances should you give this guy your vote if you do I'm going to tell you something as a person of color you're a race traitor and not only that but if, if, but if you give this guy your vote if, 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 you're not, if you're a person of Caucasian then you are telling everybody of color what side of the fence that you on. And just like with Mr. Gaddy, you don't give a damn about your fellow brothers and sisters of color 
in this country.